Hello and welcome to another Magic Seal to Deck Building exercise where we're taking a look at the latest set which is Amon Cat. So we're gonna open six boosters and then build a 40 card seal deck and I'll go over my thought process while I build it. But first we have to open them so I'll go ahead and open the six packs and sort them by color. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we're starting off with a Minotaur Sure Shot, Jero's Resolve, Hecma Sentinels, Nimble Blade Kenra, Miasmic Mummy, Colossipede, Scarab Feast. Horror of the Broken Lands, Sun Scorched Desert, Naga Vitalist, Hapatra's Mark, Nest of Scarabs, Cast Out, and our rare is a Combat Celebrant. All right, moving on to pack number two. Where we are greeted by a Bloodlust Inciter, followed by a Fan Bearer. Then we have a Takrop Skirmisher. Another Minotaur Sure Shot, Spidery Grasp, Blighted Bat, Evolving Wilds, Hooded Brawler, River Serpent, Compulsory Rest, True Heart Twins, Shadowstorm Vizier, Exemplar of Strength, and our rare is an Archfiend of Ifnir. Sweet. On to pack number three. Where we have Anointer Priest, another Takrop Skirmisher. Soul Stinger, another Colossipede, Magma Spray, In Ocatra's Name, Avon Initiate, Painted Bluffs, Bitter Blade Warrior, Consuming Fervor. Another Shadowstorm Vizier. Another Exemplar of Strength. And our rare is a Mouth to Feed. I'll turn it around so you don't have to. Alright. And we even get a Foil Slither Blade. That's pretty awesome. And a Full Art Planes. Would you look at that. On to pack number four. Where we have a hieroglyphic illumination. Cartouche of zeal. Ornery kudu. Cursed minotaur. Washra cultivator. Electrify, Painful Lesson, Slitherblade, another Inokatra's name, 
Rana's monument. A reduce to rubble. A scaled behemoth. And our rare is a failure to comply. And a nice foil full art planes. Nice. And the normal full art planes. That's pretty funny. Alright, so on to pack number five. Where we have a cartouche of knowledge. Brute Strength, Sacred Cat, Cancel, Cursed Minotaur, another Colossipede, Dissenter's Deliverance, Cartouche of Strength, Hyena Pack, Zenith Seeker, Another Hapatra's Mark, Okatra's Monument, and our rare is a Regal Caracal. Alright, and we even get a Foil New Perspectives. Alright, cool. So, on to our final pack. Where we have a Tormenting Voice, Blighted Bat, Haze of Pollen, Violent Impact, Binding Mummy, Decision Paralysis, Honed Kopesh, Cartouche of Ambition, Nafcrop Entangler, a Labyrinth Guardian, Limits of Solidarity, Avon Wind Guide, and our final rare is a Plague Belcher, and a Foil Regular Mountain. We got pretty lucky with the foils today, and a full art forest as well. Alright, so now that we've sorted all our colors, it's time to take a look at each color individually to get a sense of how deep the color is, how many playables we have, and maybe how many removal spells or creatures they have. So starting out with white, we see that the color is not very deep to begin with, not very many cards. If we actually look at the playables, we have a few very very powerful ones. We've got good removal spells in, well, Fan Bearer you can count as removal and cast out, as well as a Compulsory Rest, so that's three quality removal spells in white. And then we have a very, very powerful Regal Caracal. And then the rest of the cards, we have a Binding Mummy, which is always serviceable. Sacred Cat is kind of on the weaker end, same with Anointer Priest. You're not really looking to play this in Sealed if you can avoid it, and then two copies of Inokatra's name, but it doesn't seem like we have a ton of zombies, we can maybe look at black, maybe we have some more zombies there, and then a Jero's Resolve, which is fine, but not exciting. So we only have five really good white cards, and then a few medium filler cards, so maybe we can splash these two white removal spells uh, cast out and compulsory rest are certainly splashable since they only have single white in the mana cost and even late in the game when you draw them they're still very relevant while fan bearer you could technically splash but he doesn't have immediate impact to turn you play him so that makes him kind of a weaker splash card and uh, regal caracal unfortunately is double white so it's kind of a little more tricky to splash 
unless you've got maybe a gift of paradise or two in your deck that can double fix your mana but it doesn't look like we opened any so white's probably not gonna be our main color taking a look at blue we see that it's a bit deeper we've got let's see two tacrop skirmishers and a labyrinth guardian as nice two drops with embalm uh, then what else do we have? A Cartouche of Knowledge is very, very good. We've got Hieroglyphic Illumination, certainly playable. And Avon Initiate, also a very good Embalm creature. And River Serpent I'm also going to include in almost any blue deck, just because it cycles and then later in the game it's a nice 5-5. Five five. And that's pretty much it. I mean, Hecma Sentinels can be fine, but certainly not exciting. And then New Perspectives is basically just a 6 mana draw 3, which is kind of slow. Decision Paralysis is not great. Zenith Seeker you could also play, but is a bit expensive. Unless you've got a lot of cyclers and maybe big green creatures to take advantage of the ability. And Cancel is usually more of a sideboard card, since Counterspells and Limited, especially 3 mana Counterspells, are difficult to keep up at all times if you don't have a lot of instants. So, taking a look at blue, we do have a pretty deep pool here. But also not a super exciting one. No very powerful uncommons or rares that stand out. But certainly a good start for maybe a, a creature base with these embalmed creatures uh, in blue. So we'll look further, but so far we haven't really seen anything too exciting. So maybe black has something good to offer us. We see that we have some powerful rares here. Archfiend of Ifnir, Plague Belcher. Certainly a reason to be in black. We've got some uh, Cyclers. We've got uh, Horror of the Broken Lands, which is always playable. Uh, Scarab Feast, you can always play as a Cycler. And then Miasmic Mummy is better in red, black, more aggressive decks where you can discard your hand. Um, we had two copies of Blighted Bat, if I'm not mistaken, and two copies of the Minotaur as well. So these are all just fine playables as well. There are also Zombies, which is relevant for that Inokatra's name and Binding Mummy we saw in white. And a Cartouche of Ambition is also very good. So is Soul Stinger for being a common. So if we look at black, we don't actually see many or even any removal spells besides the Cartouche of Ambition, which is kind of worrisome. But we do have a lot of very good creatures in Plague Belcher, Archfiend, Horror, Soul Stinger, Double Curse Minotaur, Double Blinded Bat. And then the Cartouche is certainly very good as well. So yeah, a pretty deep black color here. But again, no removal, which we kind of want in our sealed deck. So certainly a color I'm interested to play, but we'll look ahead if we can maybe find some more removal in these other colors. So let's take a look at red where we have a pretty deep pool, but there's also a lot of less exciting cards in this color. So let's take a look at our creatures first. We've got an Entangler, two Sure Shots, which are all very good. Uh, the Nimble Blade Canra is not really an exciting two drop, but you could play it if you really need to. Same with the Hyena Pack, not really an exciting four drop. Then we have some good removal spells actually. We have a Magma Spray and an Electrify, which are both very good. Cartouche of Zeal can be good if you're more aggressive and maybe have a Trial or two, but I don't think we picked up any Trials. And then we also have Brute Strength Consuming Fervor for when you wanna go hyper aggressive. And Brute Strength is just a fine combat trick as well. True Heart Twins can be fine if you have a lot of Exert creatures. Uh, Bloodlust and Scyther can be good in hyper-aggressive decks, but usually those don't really come up in sealed. And the uh, Combat Celebrant is also just a fine card. It's a mythic, but uh, only one toughness, so it's usually going to die in combat very easily. But if you have a way for him to survive, then he becomes a lot better, of course. So looking at red, we have two very good removal spells. Then some decent creatures here, but not too many. And then Limits of Solidarity, actually a very good one, 
just because having cycling on an act of treason effect is, is very useful. So really only five or six cards I'm excited to play in red. So let's move on to green. Where we have a very deep pool as you can see. We've got Naga Vitalist for some ramp. I think triple Colossipede. Which are all solid playables. Then we have a Cartouche of Strength, which is exciting. Removal in green. We have a Scaled Behemoth, which is sometimes just unbeatable for an opponent. Ordinary Kudu is serviceable. Mouth to Feed is very good. Two copies of Exemplar of Strength are very good. We have a Bitterblade Warrior, which is solid. Same with Hooded Brawler. So yeah, green looks like a color I'm certainly interested to play. Very deep, lots of good cards along the curve, plus a removal spell in Cartouche of Strength, some card advantage in Mouth to Feed. And yeah, not much more you can ask for a color, I guess. So certainly wanting to play green if we can help it. And then our multicolor cards, we've got two Shadowstorm Viziers, which are fine in blue-black. We've got a Reduce to Rubble, which is not very good. Same with Failure to Comply, not really a card I'm interested in. And an Avon Wind Guide, which is very good in blue-white. But of course that means we have to be blue-white specifically. And then taking a look at our lands, we have Sun Scorched Desert, Evolving Wilds and Painted Bluffs. So Evolving Wilds certainly a card I'm interested in. Even in two color decks it can be good mana fixing. Uh, Painted Bluffs on the other hand is not really a card I'm willing to play unless I'm going deep. And Sun Scorched Desert is basically never playable. And then our artifacts, we picked up actually the two better monuments, I think, Rona's Monument and Okatra's Monument, which are both playable, especially if you're in the respective colors with a lot of creatures in those colors, and an owned Kopash, which is not really that exciting. So I'll put these in the respective colors, just because that's probably where I'm going to play them. And now it's time to start looking at specific color combinations. So I'm certainly interested to see how green, black and maybe green, red look like. Because those look like the deepest colors with the most options. And then we can move on from there. So I'll see you in a bit. So this is how the red-green deck would look like. Right now we've got 22 cards laid out. And I think this is a 17 land deck because we actually don't have any cyclers here in red-green. So I think just playing 17 lands when we want to go up to 5-6 mana is, is fine. So that means we have to add one more card. And the last two cards I'm considering are Spidery Grasp or Cartouche of Zeal. Not sure which ones of these is better in the deck. We don't have any trials to go with the Cartouche of Zeal, unfortunately. And uh, I think Spidery Grasp is a bit expensive, but might just be a better fit in this deck. So these are the last two cards I was considering. But taking a look at the rest of the deck, we see we have some uh, very good two drops in the deck. Bitter Blade Warrior, Double Exemplar of Strength, Naga Vitalist to ramp us a bit and a Nefcrop Entangler, all quality 2-drops, and the 3-drops are no different. We've got Ornery Kudu, which is not exciting, but fine, if, especially with the Naga Vitalist, if you can put the minus 1, minus 1 counter there. Also combines with Exemplar of Strength. We've got Hooded Brawler, Mouth to Feed for some card advantage. Then 2 Minotaur Sure Shot, which can also give us some game against flying creatures. Since we don't have a ton of removal, having a way to block flyers can be very relevant. And the Combat Celebrant, not an exciting card by any means, but uh, if you can get through with them and untap your creatures, you can maybe steal a game. Then Triple Colossipede, True Heart Twins, which I think the Twins is fine, but not exciting. We don't have a ton of Exert creatures. And then the Scale Behemoth, so a solid creature base, no 4-drops unfortunately. And then looking at our spells, we've got Magma Spray and Electrify and Cartouche of Strength as our main removal spells. Then a Brute Strength as a cheap combat trick, 
Then Ronas' Monument, which can also give our creatures plus two, plus two and trample, and also helps us ramp out these Colossal Peats. So I think Ronas' Monument is a solid inclusion in this build. And then also a Limits of Solidarity to push our creatures through, steal a creature from the opponent and win a game that way. So that's the red-green deck, so a pretty aggressive beatdown deck with big creatures and combat tricks basically. So it looks like a solid deck, but we can maybe take a look at the green-black and see if that looks any better. Okay, so this is the green-black build of this pool. So as you can see, we don't have a ton of non-creature spells here, not a ton of removal. In fact, we only have Cartouche of Strength as true removal and then Cartouche of Ambition as kind of a removal spell. But we make up for it with the fact that we have some very powerful creatures, like the Archfiend of Ifnir, and of course our green creatures were all very solid as well. We also have a nice minus one, minus one counter theme going on, as we picked up an additional Plague Belcher and Soul Stinger to go with that theme as well. And I think this is a 16 land deck, because we have access to Scarab Feast and Horror of the Broken Lands, which we can always cycle, although this is also fine on turn 5, just because we have the Archfiend of Ifnir that promotes cycling, and of course when you do have powerful cards, it's always nice to be able to uh, maybe dig a little deeper to try and find them, since they can just win you the game. So I think playing the two cyclers here and then only 16 lands is fine in this deck, because we only really go up to 5 mana, and we even have a Naga Vitalist as well. So I think 16 lands in this build is fine, which means we can add one more card to the deck. And these are the options. So we are already playing one Curse Minotaur, Double Blighted Bat. I think the Bat is slightly better than the Minotaur, just because Flying is a bit better than Manus. Then we could potentially play Nas of Scarabs in this deck. We have Double Exemplar of Strength, Ornery Kudu, uh, Plague Belcher, Soul Stinger, potentially Archfiend and even Cartouche of Ambition that all put minus one minus one counter on stuff which can all help with the Ness of Scarabs. Might still be a little light but it can be very powerful especially with cards that put multiple minus one minus one counters on creatures like the Exemplar of Strength. So I could definitely see including the Ness of Scarabs in this build. Other options are Miasmic Mummy which isn't particularly exciting. Uh, same with Painful Lesson and another Curse Minotaur, which I don't think we need. So yeah, this is how the green-black deck would look like. I think overall I still prefer the red build. The, the black build is a bit more high variance in the sense that it has one very, very good card. Also, Cartouche of Ambition, if you can combine it with Scale Behemoth, is almost unbeatable. Um, but overall, red was a bit more solid with the two and three drops, I think and also offered more removal options like the Magma Spray and Electrify. So I'm not sure which one's better. I think the red build overall is just a little more complete. It also had the Act of Treason, which can steal you a game out of nowhere. So I think I would still go with the red-green build over the black-green build, but uh, I wouldn't fault anyone for playing the black-green version either. So both this black-green build and the previous red-green build, we could have potentially splashed some white removal spells, but the problem is that we only have this Evolving Wilds to rely on for our splash, and I would prefer to have something like uh, three uh, planes or at least three white sources to support our white removal. And if we have Evolving Wilds, that still means we have to play two planes, which in a 16 or 17 lands build would mean only having 7-7 seven, seven of the other colors, which is kind of light, so I don't think we can really afford to play the white removal spells with only one Evolving Wilds, and I don't really want to play the uh, Painted Bluffs here as mana fixing just because it's such a bad card otherwise. It would mean that our mana base would be a lot less consistent, and especially in the red-green build that's trying to curve out and be very aggressive. Uh, having mana issues is not what you need. Maybe in this black-green build that's a little slower, you can afford to maybe uh, miss out on playing a creature on curve in favor of having some more removal, because this build doesn't have any removal at all, basically. So I could see maybe playing the white in this build, but I don't think we want to play the white in the red-green build, just because we already have a decent amount of interactive spells. So if we were to play the white, we could make some cuts, 
We could just maybe get rid of the extra cyclers and just play 17 lands so we can have enough basics of each color to support the white splash and maybe get rid of something like the spidery grasp or nest of scarabs. So those are the options. So we can still take a look at some other color combinations. I don't think we can get away from playing green. So that means we can still explore green, white and maybe green, blue. So we can do that very quickly here. So yeah, taking a look at green, white, we see that we just don't really have enough playable cards. We're even playing stuff like Binding Mummy in a deck with basically no mummies. And uh, the reason to play white is basically for the Regal Caracal, the Cast Out, Compulsory Rest and Fan Bearer, which are basically the only cards that are in white in the deck. And again, with the Evolving Wilds, it's not like we can really splash much. We could consider maybe splashing the red removal spells like Magma Spray and Electrify, but Magma Spray isn't really an exciting splash card. So I don't think that's something we want to do. And uh, I don't think we have any other great options. We could, I guess, play the Ocatra's Monument, but again, not really that exciting since we don't have a ton of white creatures to benefit from the ability. And uh, we would just be making a few 1-1 tokens, which don't do a ton for this deck don't have a lot of evasive creatures either in this build and not a lot of ways to push damage through besides the Ronas's monument. It does have some powerful cards in it for sure but I think the deck is just lacking in too many departments. So let's take a final look at blue-green just to make sure we covered all the different green color combinations and we'll be right back. Okay so this is the blue-green build as you can see we picked up some Embalm 2-drops. The exciting card is Cartouche of Knowledge here. Being able to give one of our big creatures flying can definitely close out the game. We also have an Avon Initiate, which can be nice as another flying creature with Embalm as well. And the Zenith Seeker, another flyer. And we do have some cycling cards. So right now we're looking at 22 cards, which means we should still be able to add one more card here which means we could add a card like the Center's Deliverance, basically just to cycle it and to go with the Zenith Seeker, which benefits from cycling. Uh, Haze of Pollen, same thing, uh, can be a bit more relevant as a, a fog effect, but it costs three mana to cycle, which is a bit prohibitive. Uh, Decision Paralysis, not a great card, can maybe tap some key blockers or attackers so you can go through with your big green creatures. Uh, Hackma Sentinels just as a mediocre 3-drop in this deck with not a ton of cyclers and then the Honed Kopash which is also not that great. So really no fantastic options and I think overall the deck um, gains some flying elements with the Initiate Seeker and Cartouche of Knowledge but doesn't really get any other interactive elements like we got from maybe the red cards for example. So I still think the red-green build is the best build of the ones we've covered here. And I don't think we can build a great deck without green, just because it has solid creatures all around the curve, while other colors weren't really offering all that much. They had maybe one or two exciting cards, but were either not deep enough or just didn't have enough interaction. So I don't think we can get away without green, which means a red-green is probably the way to go. So if that's going to do it for this sealed deck building exercise, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and as always, have a nice day.